Welcome back to the program, Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. Joining me today from Kenya is um, Mr. Brian Wesala, and um, he's the CEO, founder and CEO of the Football Foundation for Africa. In the studio with me is Asha, Al Asha Thierry Alon. He's the CEO of Africa Sport Network. Brian, we were talking to you about um, the culture of support in Africa as different from the culture of support in Europe. How, how, is that a possible way we can get around um, not having the kind of resources that probably we need today to, to be globally competitive? Um, I, I always hesitate to, uh, to, you know, to compare African football and European football and seeing that as a, a gap that we have to cover. Mm. I, I think also we are at the point where African sports, African football needs to decide how do we want to grow. You mentioned uh, the issue we have with, you know, communities um, supporting, you know, clubs. Here in Africa, you see a lot of factors that have played into these. We have the big community clubs. I can tell you, for example, here in Kenya, we have um, AFC Leopards and, uh, and Godma here. These are clubs with, uh, with, uh, with a huge following. But now the challenge is they have not been educated well enough to put in place strategies uh, to, 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 to monetize or to develop a, a, an economic model around their, their, their fund bases. You know? So that's one. Another kind of clubs we see here, and I think there's similar structures in Nigeria, is uh, clubs that are either supported by, uh, by perostatos, or, um, or, or, or companies, kind of like a CSR uh, uh, project. So here in Kenya, you see uh, like uh, one of the leading banks in the region, KCB, they have a football club. You see, these kind of entities will never have a community around them. They will never be able to develop a fan base. Mm. But these are the clubs that are holding uh, everything you know, uh, uh, together. Uh, I believe in Nigeria, you have a lot of clubs that are, are tied to your um, to the federal states, mm. you know. So how do you now take these and help them, for example, develop a strategy that will ground them in, in community? Some here have tried, oh, let's move our club to a certain region so that we can associate that, that region. I think that's a wrong approach. Those who want to invest in sports should look at teams or clubs in the communities and grow them from there. That's the challenge we have with Africa. Mm. The, other thing why, uh, the other issue we have is the proliferation of, of football academies across the continent. Mm. Uh, and this has been um, kind of uh, encouraged by the idea that uh, you, you, you can sell a player and immediately you become, you know, um, a millionaire, you know. But we are not seeing how these academies are impacting what we talk about as culture. Because for them, they, they are mostly fashioned for export. Mm. So are they thinking around how they will build uh, uh, the community around them? Some of, you, some of them are even very guarded uh, entities. We know in West Africa, these are the very, very popular academies that have no link whatsoever with the community where they have been established. Mm. They have simply been put in place like a factory for, factory for players. So how do we counter uh, all this? For me, it's about investing in the grassroots, investing in education, investing in infrastructure, build around what is already there mm. in order to create that culture of football. But you, you, it's difficult for me to say, you know, we don't have that, you know, I am a, a Lexham fan kind of thing. We have it. It's just that we are not thinking of how to strategically grow it. Mm. You know, everybody is doing something small here and there. Mm. But even if we take that whole ecosystem, as, uh, if we take it as a whole, and see how do we position it, you know, for investment. Then you can see something starting to move uh, socially and, and, and economically. So there, there are really many issues that we should start to analyze. And that's why I believe research knowledge will be important in moving the African industry forward. Mm -hmm. It's not just about resources. And you're right, Asha, and you say, yeah, we have the resources. But that can go to a very, you know, political level. You can say you have the, the resources, but how much of it is it being invested in in, uh, in in football, in sports? And the other challenge we have is that, you know, sports, football did not give that immediate return that a lot of people who hold 
the financial resources are looking for. But is that social capital that we can build through sports that needs to be invested in? So how do we get more people to support our grassroots uh, football, our grassroots structure to be able to grow the whole, uh, uh, the whole industry and to grow these clubs that we're talking about so that they can have a fan base? And the fan base there have to be huge. I have seen small clubs here develop even a digital uh, fan base. I can give you an example of Eldoret Football Club. Very small entity in one of uh, Kenya's newest city, actually. But because of the strategic work they've been able to do, they've been able to build a community around what they see as values that they can promote. Mm. So these are the kind of strategies, knowledge that we need to work on to build a sustainable uh, football ecosystem in Africa. Okay. Uh, very well said, I think. Okay, so now, Asha, here's where the media... You know, I'm very hard on the media, you know, and you know, you, you know you've, you've, you've been on my show a few times, and you know that I'm really, really hard on the media. Why? Because it's the media that should tell the stories. It's the media that must, you know, put, uh, that must draw in the audience. I'll give you an example. If you, if you don't tell these stories, and the stories are there, actually, yeah, but if you don't tell these stories, you can't generate the sort of buzz that would then make the billionaire that you're talking about then say, you know what, even if I don't make money from this, at least there's goodwill. Let me just, let me do this for my community because maybe it fosters peace and then my, I'll have a better business environment to, to operate. Yeah? But you guys don't tell the stories. I, I'll give you an example. There's, the, there's a young guy in Nigerian football today. He's Amobi. He's, he's the GM of Rangers International. This guy took over the club last year as GM, and he, he took them to the championship. He won the championship, right? And every day he's out there doing what I think, you know, what most of us agree is the, are the right things. He's getting young people in the communities involved in the club. People are 13, 14, 15. He's talking to them about, you know, character, you know, uh, for me, you know, how, how they must grow as characters characters, you know, grow in character to be able to represent Rangers and the wider society and things like that. He's doing a fantastic job. Yet, I have not one day opened any newspaper or seen any article from any media organization in this country just doing some story about this guy that enchants, this guy is 34, some story about this young guy that enchants younger Nigerians and makes them think, oh, so maybe this thing is possible. Maybe we should um, emulate this guy. I haven't seen anything like that. Why, Asha? Why aren't you telling our stories? Well, good question. Yeah. But uh, I'll, I, was, I was smiling because, I'm, first of all, I'm not familiar with the, the story of these guys of Rangers. Uh, and Asha, that's a problem. I, well, it's a problem. Yeah, it's But it. sometimes it's a problem that is generated from its root, okay? Mm. If I looked at the match of Rangers against El Canemi on the first match day, mm. and the stadium was 90% empty, mm. then maybe the guy is doing a fantastic job, and I'm not criticizing, but maybe it's not sufficient in order to fill up the stadium, because mm. how hard it should be to fill up a stadium in Nigeria, in such a populated country, that you have kids everywhere, just bring them free of charge into the stadium for the ambience. So maybe the guy is doing a fantastic job and you're familiar with him, mm. but he's still on the level that doesn't create these waves in the pond that will come to the media. We are going, we have, yeah. we, I had my journalist on grounds mm. in each and every one of the, of the NPFL matches since mm. last year. Mm. Um, are we familiar with people that are doing fantastic job? Of course we are. Mm -hmm. We are not. Are we familiar with everybody? Definitely, definitely not. Okay. Um, by that we can only encourage them. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people will, they need to come and say, look, they need to contact the media and say, guys, come and see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are doing something, but no one do, is do, uh, knows about it just because they were so quiet about it. Or maybe you don't know about it because, you know, maybe your guys need to do a bit more work. Because he's a very popular guy. People, might be. Uh, yeah, people know him in the industry and what he's doing. All right? And um, it's something, I'll, it would be refreshing someday to see this guy or to see a player. And, you know, the, the stars are the business. 
fans follow the stars. Today in the Nigerian League, you know, one of the problems I personally have is you can't see guys point to 10 players and say these are the top stars in the Nigerian Premier League. Do you understand? Without seeing their pictures, without seeing any story about them, they'll tell you. We need to create these stars. You know, some people say it's the responsibility of the clubs. I, I don't totally agree with that. Do you get? I think the media should do a lot more. Because, but the media needs to understand that by promoting the league, they too get business. Let me go to Brian, right? What's the situation like in Kenya uh, between your media and, and, and your clubs? Um, first, just, just to take you back here, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's good that you brought up uh, the, the, the story of uh, Amobi Ezea, who is actually one of the speakers at the upcoming Africa Football Business Summit here in, here in Kenya, because he is, he is doing an excellent job. Yeah. And it just took me you know, two connections to see there's somebody in Nigeria who is trying to do something different. Mm. So I think uh, this, this is the kind of work that needs to be congratulated, um, highlighted, and, and, and showcased uh, in the summit, because... Uh, the challenge now you have, and probably that's what Ashe is alluding to, is that he's not doing enough. No, he's doing his bit, so we need another five or six, seven Amobi as a yeah. the Nigerian League uh, to, to be able to create, you know, that kind of uh, uh, environment that we are, we are looking for. Yeah, coming back to, um, uh, yeah, the media here and, and the role they play, and I think this is another area that I feel we really need to, uh, to work on. Um, and again, it's for the same reason, probably we are going back to the conversation we started. Our media is heavily focused on, uh, on pushing uh, foreign leagues. One of the, most of the people who are here regarded as, you know, renowned journalists, uh, renowned sports journalists, have, have built their, their name, their brand uh, around, you know, foreign leagues and foreign, uh, foreign clubs. So you see the, the, the quality of sports journalism, I speak here specifically for Kenya, but I think I can also talk about Africa, is not good. You know, they're not giving us in-depth coverage of what is happening in our clubs. Yeah, You read something from a journalist or, or a video and you fail to, to see, like, what has this guy informed me about yeah. my industry, about my club that I cannot get uh, by my own. They're just focused on probably scores, transfers, mm. peace. But there's a lot of stories. There's a lot you can tell, even from the challenges and the opportunities, you know, like you say, giving good coverage to the kind of work somebody like Amobi uh, is doing in Nigeria should should even be at the global, you know, at the, at the continental level. Mm. And the big uh, media outlets should be able to cover this kind of thing as a way of, you know, even inspiring Mm. Uh, uh, the rest uh, of the of the content. So I think there is there is a lot of work we can do in the media space to cover more of our local football and even locally. It's not just covering the the you know the top clubs and top leagues. You know, go right to the grassroots. Bring us these stories that we we'll feel uh, are informing us. They're educating us. They're entertaining us with things you can never cannot find maybe on mainstream media. Mm. I find it strange that as African sports journalists, they share, you know, EPL scores. Like, why would you be giving me EPL scores? I'm already following my, my favorite club in, in Europe, so I get those scores uh, because, you know, in the age of social media. Mm. So I think there is some work that needs to be done there, and also it takes people who really will have a passion uh, to cover to bring African sports stories to that level that they will then be able to uh, to monetize. Okay, I'm going, Ash, I'm going to come to you, but <laughs> let me also, make, I completely agree with you, Brian, right? Um, so I remember what got me in, 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 um, into the, the big tennis, the big tennis events, um, golf and all of that. Why? And, and Formula One, by the way, why? There were weekends, I used to look forward to weekends just to read stories about, you know, the conquest of, of Lewis Hamilton, of, um, of, um, of Tiger Woods, of, of Roger Federer and, and the like. Do you understand? Just the beauty of the, of, of the articles was enough entertainment for me. 
Do you understand? So when we look at the media, it's not like he's saying, it's not just about, you know, putting out scores and, you know, putting out fixtures and all that. You've got to write stuff in, in enchanting ways that, you know, uh, the fans can say, you know what, if this is what's going on, I want a piece of that. You know, I want to see this guy that they're talking about, you know. And then before you know it, you can feel, you can feel your stadiums. But yeah, Asha. So bas basically, basically, you know, let me cut. You, you know, I, you know I, I know that you want to grow the local game. We've had discussions before. But what more do you think we can do? You know, what more do you think we can do uh, to make sure that we can bring together, you know, the key stakeholders in the industry? I, you know, look, I'm in the media as well myself, bringing you. Do you think that there's a need for the media to, to lead the charge to bring together everybody and say this is how sports can progress our societies. Do you think that? Well, Lydia, uh, the, the media have a very important role mm. uh, that we are taking very serious. Okay, mm. you have your uh, radio programs, you have your TV programs. Mm. Ourselves in Africa Sport Network, we are fifty percent of our content mm. is local content. Mm. And only the other 50 speaks about the, uh, the whole other uh, Western and, and uh, world. Yeah. So we, we are doing our part. I yeah. think that one of the biggest challenges in Africa is that the guys with the passion don't have the means. Yeah. And the guys with the means, don't they have don't the have the passion. Yet. And this, this connection needs to be done, whether by, as I said earlier, by government incentives. So the guys with the means, will be connected to the guys with the passion and they will start to to bring it uh, uh, to create this ecosystem that will create teams that are here not just in order to sell players they are here to grow a football uh, 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 culture they are here to grow this heritage of a club that is doing something not just in order to sell the player one year after he, he scored many goals or something like that. Um, and once it will come, and this must be driven by the whole ecosystem. I cannot go to someone that has the means, and we have plenty of people in Nigeria that has the means, and to tell them, guys, Please put uh, no, but, uh, five but million dollars this year on this club no, no, because it will bring. Yeah, but he needs to be Asha, passionate about Asha, it. Last season, one of the richest Nigerians, uh, Mr. Tony Lumelu, went public with the fact that he was interested in in getting and, into the football space. And what happened with that? Nothing happened because nobody's hearing about it anymore. Nobody, ha nobody because has. Because he what decided happened. not to go because he decided not to enter to football. Mm. We were keen, we were, of course, for us as a media network, mm. thinking that uh, Tony Alumelu will enter, you'll say, okay, the whole group of UBA Has will he come out to say that? Of course not, but if we were, we were just uh, waiting for something to happen in order for us to, to, to reach out and to see what we can do together and to give it coverage, eventually it never happened. We cannot push the person that is maybe sending a, a test balloon to the air to yeah. see where the wind will take this balloon and uh, r putting all our hopes on this one. Yeah. Uh, it, things should happen from these guys. Yeah. And the fact that he already or someone already brought the topic, mm -hmm. I think it's something that is good. Okay, mm -hmm. I think it's a move in the right direction. But now things should happen. Okay, And even if a club owner that doesn't have the means of the uh, of that person uh, can still drive crowd into the stadium and still make sure that the stadium is full once we are streaming it uh, live to make it more interesting and once this will happen things people will start looking at it differently okay I have a slide o on how much the rights for the English Premier League um, is costing you know us in Nigeria and um, Brian look if that every year now I mean the deal that was signed two years ago that's expiring next year shows that the EPL costs you know the the broadcaster 222 million dollars every year that's money that's leaving Africa 222 million dollars it's money we don't have you know, this is what they say, like, Rome is 
burning and Caesar is fiddling uh, and uh, Nero is fiddling. I mean, look, we can't be fiddling, you know. We need to trap this money in Africa and make it do something for us, you know. So, um, Bren, what do you think? Um, how, how, do we, how, do we, how do we get our markets to see the value of, of, of um, uh, football, that, of, of business that we're losing because of all of this um, Euro football that we are, we are uh, angling for? Um, yeah, just listening, uh, listening to you and, and, and Asha, I, 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 now, I think of how I've been thinking um, lately is that we need to push a bigger agenda through football if we are going to rope in the right people mm -hmm. invest in our sports, in our football. Mm -hmm. And that has to be a very Pan-African agenda. How do we link our sports, our football, to the progress of our continent and our people? And I think when we spoke, I told you, probably it's even high time we stop thinking as Nigeria, as Kenya. And how do we think Africa? Because mm -hmm. football is something that you know, brings us uh, together, but we cannot just afford to, you know, be passionate. We love football. Can we drive a huge social economic agenda through our sports that we now attract these big people, big money that we are talking about? It's interesting to hear people like Tony are interested in the in the sports space, mm. but probably if they just see it within that lens of I am putting my money in football. They will not. Uh, uh, they will. They, 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 they will shy away. So we need really to push a bigger agenda. And it's something probably needs to be crafted uh, to see how we can bring in these people. And for me, it has to be tied to you know social economic development of uh, of our continent okay. and you know link it to infrastructure, to health, to education. Okay. Okay, Brian. Drive Brian, through the platform that we have. Okay, Brian, and I need to draw your example to what's going on in South Africa. You're closer to South Africa than we are, right? And I tell people that from the very first year that the PSL was launched in 1996, they've had um, um, title sponsorships all the way through to now. I'm talking about first they started with Castle Lager, and then it was Absa Bank, then it was DSTV, now it's Betway. They didn't wait for the product to be finished or to be some glamorous. They support, for me, I think that is support as opposed to identifying with success. It's happening in South Africa. What, 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 why are they doing what they're doing? And why are we not doing the same? You know, just basically looking at it from the point of getting corporate in investors into sports. Yeah, it's, exactly, it's exactly what I'm saying. They tied it to a big agenda yeah. uh, and that was you know post apartheid yeah what platform is going to seem to be bringing oh, yeah, us yeah, together yeah, 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 that's, and you remember that's that was 93 90, 94 mm. uh, when they hosted um, uh, the, the rugby world cup uh, immediately uh, that was followed by hosting the the afcon in 1996 yeah. which was yeah. supposed to be in yeah. kenya but because kenya could not uh, put together infrastructure yeah. uh, in good time south africa took the tournament but that investment in sports was really being driven by that post appetite movement and yeah, uniting the people yeah. of South Africa. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they were heavily, heavily investing in sports. So how can we take that to a continental level? You know, you rarely hear when, you know, they talk about Africa Agenda 2063, but you rarely hear them talking about sports in these mm. things. Sports is somewhere, you know, really hidden. It's not one of the, those key... Uh, areas of, of, of investment. But look at a country like, like, like Europe, I tell people, look at what, outside of these big brands that we see, you know, look at why is Europe investing in, in, in football and what kind of messages do they communicate. Mm. For example, UEFA, they have their respect campaign. Mm. And without really realizing, they have a measure of respect for, for each other as countries. And people really rally behind these kind of campaigns media will definitely follow a campaign that has a continental reach yes. and with that kind of media attention then uh, the, the investors the, the private uh, people that we're looking at with the with the, with the, with the big money that will, that will come in okay. so we, we really have to tie it to a bigger a bigger agenda if we're going to grow our sports in africa 
Okay, um, very quickly now, Asha. You know, um, what do you think in the age of globalization, and you have to do this like in a minute or so because we need to uh, call, call, uh, wrap, wrap things up. What do you think in, in the age of globalization we should do in, in, in Africa? From your standpoint, what do you think we should do? Governmental change. Because once the government will give incentives mm. for sports investments or investments mm. in sport, mm. the brands will stop pushing it. Mm. Okay? Secondly, the government needs to decide on a national plan for development of sport. In different, different types of sport, there is no reason uh, why we won't have proper basketball in Nigeria. Yeah. It's not that we are uh, yeah. all uh, short people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there is no reason why not to have it, but the reason is that just, we can't find anywhere a, a basketball stadium. Yeah. So once there is a national plan, long run, for development of sport, plus tax incentives for brands to invest in sports, now you'll see things moving. Okay. On that note, we, we have to call it a wrap for today. It's been a very engrossing session. Thank you very much, Brian, for honoring this in invitation. There's a lot that you have said today that I'm sure would, would um, um, energize a lot of people in the industry listening to this. And thank you very much, Asha, for being, being here again. Um, it's always a great pleasure, pleasure to have you in the studio with me. Right. So, Brian, you want to say Thank you very much, Father. It's a pleasure, and uh, looking forward to engage, Father. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah, okay then. And Asha? Thanks, thanks for inviting. It was a pleasure. And see you uh, on, uh, on our match days. Okay. Unfortunately, Brian, we didn't speak too much about your Africa, um, your Africa Football Business Summit. Football Business Summit. Yeah, we're going to yeah. talk about, we're going to talk about, and I'm going to ensure that we engage again, maybe on, on radio next, next time around. And so you can elaborate on, on that, all right? And so thank you very okay. much, viewers, for, for watching. Until we meet again next week for another bumper. Next week is going to be hot. And I'd advise you to, to stay tuned for who our guest is going to be. All right? The big name in African football. And, you know, um, you don't want to miss that. Until we meet again next week, this is Mio Rufo saying, be productive, be good, and stay safe.